Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, hot birds. Roy explains an eagle's thermal signature. Fox Oracle. Mike Powell offers more fox shooting tactical advice. We have news and trucking Nora. What's Max Hunt playing at? First, Kai App Bryn is ensuring that Ribena's supply chain isn't interrupted. We're after bunnies on the black currants. Let's have, let's have a look at that. Yeah. We first filmed Kai back in 2010 with a very youthful Mark Gilchrist who decided to buy a ferret. As it turned out, it wasn't a very fruitful morning. Kel surprise. But now, Kai, five years on with a heap load of counselling, is back to make another appearance on Field Sports Britain. This time, he's in the captain's chair. Most of the crop here is um, black currants. In fact, all of it's black currants. And it just seems to hold quite a lot of rabbits. I haven't been here for a while. I did a bit of fox in here last week. We had quite a good successful session. But um, one thing we did notice was how many rabbits are now running about. So I thought it was about time to get the, the two two out and see if we could just knock a few down. It was an embarrassing number of rabbits. <laughs> it was an embarrassing number of rabbits. <laughs> about 436. Not keeping one's end up, eh? Well, thankfully he has some help this evening. Joining Kai is his friend Chris and his 12-year-old son, Josh. Although Josh and his father have taken up air rifling, the young Jedi has never had to handle the dead stuff. But as Kai has assigned him the job of picker-upper, plus given him a priest, it looks as if Josh is in for an evening to remember. First, we need to zero the 2-2 plus night sight, which has a special place in Kai's heart. Have a look at that. I am a night sight boy, yeah. Kind of fell in love with them, really, when not the people, even though they're very nice. <laughs> Jake is a nice guy. <laughs> but when I first started the NS200, started using it for rabbiting, and I just instantly noticed a difference that my bag count for the evening would increase significantly because a lot of the rabbits around here that we shot so many times are quite lamp shy. Kai uses a rice box, which he had about his person, and gives us a clue about what this guy does with all the game he shoots. All these rabbits that we're going to shoot this evening, and go straight to Turner's game up the road. Um, they'll process them, and um, we'll get them back in some form or another, uh, whether it be we'll make some rabbit, rabbit and thyme sausages, or maybe some rabbit burgers. So everything, absolutely everything gets used and absorbed within the, the business. You may have seen him and his wild food catering company at game fairs and major clay events like the Worlds at EJ Churchill. He's what we're calling a game changer, taking wild meat and making it sizzle. When we first started the business, we spent a long time trying to develop different recipes to see what works. And our main seller, our main burger for the business is the, our venison burger, which has got red wine and juniper berry um, in with a mix and a little bit of rosemary and just, just enough so you can just taste it. And then we do that with like caramelized red onions, um, wild rocket in like a Kentish Huffkin bun. And that's kind of like our, our main burger. Uh, Kentish Huffkin bun? I don't know what it is, but it sounds amaze buns. Talking of buns, we need to protect those currants. We cruise down the end of the rows, scouting for eyes. It's not long before Kai starts filling his boots and ours. That is impressive, isn't it? Look at that. That's what happens when you come to field sports. Living the dream, Kai. Living the dream. Josh is tentative, but doesn't shirk his duties. However, we have to explain the twitching and the bleeding and the eye popping, all of which he takes in his stride, apart from the last one. What do you think it's going to be like? Like this? Not seeing Rabbit's eyes come out. <laughs> but we know it's dead. <laughs> we know it's dead. Yeah. We're going to start shooting with the air rifle. Yeah. You can shoot well like that and hit them in the head. Mm -hmm. They might end up being like that when you hit them. That's dad's job. Is that your dad's job, is it? <laughs> Last question, what are you going to tell your mates tomorrow morning at school? I've seen everything. <laughs> <laughs> Josh really is being exposed to a lot tonight, and it's easy to forget just how few people get to see oh, this kind of thing or even realise it's going left. on. That would do. Chris is so pleased that his son is getting to see what real shooting is all about. Because of his age, 
people spend all day shooting up games on the telly. On the computer and stuff. On the computer, yeah. And they'd, they'd be shooting everything that moves. Yeah. And they don't actually realise the reality in something that's been shot. As I say, now we can relate to shooting something on the telly. Yeah. To what it actually looks like in real life. You right there, Josh? I again. Kai does a lot of pest control and a few months ago changed from using Fiocchi's to the heavier grain Winchesters and he's never looked back. Every time I do go out I do notice um, the difference compared to the old rounds I was using. It costs a little bit more, a few pence more, but it doesn't really matter because I tend to be knocking more rabbits over, which is what we like. At the end of the night we have 20 rabbits and a 12 year old who will have a lot to tell his mates in the morning. Down first and you press down the bladders down here. Press down you you might put the rest of the way out. Kai offers him the chance to clean a rabbit or two, but maybe next time. And if he's anything like Kai with Field Sports Britain, he'll be back in five years' time. Thank you, Kai. Now from the hot steak that is rabbit shooting to the cold platter that is news. I've told you, David, I need steak. This is Field Sports Channel News. Otis Ferry is rapidly becoming the public face of Vote OK. The son of Roxy Music's Brian Ferry, he's one of the protesters who stormed the chamber of the House of Commons at the height of the fox hunting debate and is widely seen as a rural hero. The British pro fox hunting group helps pro fox hunting MPs win elections by supplying dozens of canvassers, which is popular in marginal constituencies. Visit vote-ok.co.uk. The Australian government wants to ban the import of lion parts to the country because they say it'll stop canned hunting. Australian hunting groups are fighting the ban and Victoria Senator Bridget McKenzie gave a rousing speech against it. And it's about time that we bell the cat on those people who think they're morally superior and choose to denigrate and deride people participating in a legal, historic and cultural practice that has been celebrated for a um, century and indeed is part of our DNA, very DNA as human beings. Thank you. Wildlife officials in Pakistan have fined a Qatari prince and seized two of his falcons after he was caught hunting Hubara bustards. Pakistan recently banned Hubara hunting. This film was made before the ban. Sheikh Abdullah bin Abdul Rahman Al Thani's birds could be worth as much as £160,000 each. He was also fined £1,800 before he left the country. The Irish police or Garda want tighter controls on legal firearms. The reason they give is the number of legal guns that criminals are stealing. As a result, the government is looking at a clampdown, which will meet fierce resistance from Ireland's 120,000 shooters. Gunmaker Para USA, which supplied guns for the new Liam Neeson action movie, has distanced itself from the actor after he made anti-gun comments. Para USA accused Neeson of cultural and factual ignorance after he called the number of guns owned in the US a disgrace and refused to condemn Hollywood for the way it portrays guns. Still, Taken 3 might be a tired old concept, but it does look good. And finally, size isn't everything, Mr. Max Factor. We are filming and reviewing the new hybrid Mitsubishi Browning Outlander next week, and Furs Garage very kindly badged it for us. But then the Great Dane sends us this, making us look like an English Fox Terrier. Keep an eye out for both of us, although let's be honest, you'll be able to see Max's carbon footprint from space. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for fat. Thank you, David. Now, last week we were rat shooting Shay Lupton when Roy spotted his eagles through the thermal. Now that is absolutely amazing. We've just come round just to put the birds away and make sure everything's all right for the night. We've been messing around with the thermal, looking at the rats and we just looked at the golden eagle sitting up here on the swing, which is baby sitting up there. And then we looked at one of the, the African species and that the difference is just phenomenal with the amount of heat loss. So we've got a martial eagle there and a crowned eagle there. The, 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 the difference is just absolutely amazing. 
with the golden eagle you can see that they've evolved in our northern hemisphere right up in the mountain ranges up in the wind and the snow and the really bad weather because he is so so well insulated you can hardly pick up any heat source at all apart from his eyes just on the, the top of his the band around his face there the rest of him is is almost blacked out because there's, there's just no heat coming from him so he's not losing any heat at all whereas you look at the African species and you've got the glow you can see the heat you can make the outline of the bird without any trouble at all and especially along the wing edges um, and some of the border lines on the bird you can see there's a huge heat loss and again that really does highlight the problems that some of some non-native birds have in a climate like ours because you can get conditions like wingtip edema uh, which is a frostbite on the wing and you can also get frostbite on the feet as well and you, it, again it just shows it perfectly because with those birds that are from the warmer climates they're not as well equipped that's why when you when you do get a harsh winter anything under five degrees then you do have to take protective measures to make sure that they've got cover over them, that the frost isn't going to affect them. Um, whereas our native birds, like Baby sitting up there, no problem at all. He's going to sit there and, uh, and be perfectly happy and uh, not use any energy up at all trying to, trying to stay warm. So uh, yeah, it's just phenomenal what you can see with the thermal imager. That man really knows his stuffing. Now to someone else raised by foxes, it's Mike Powell without foxing. It can be picked up on pallet trucks and deposited where I need it for foxing. It's left there and then I wait in it at night and hopefully deal with the fox that I need to deal with. I don't spend much time wandering around the fields at night looking for foxes. I prefer them to come to me or wait where I know they're travelling. I do know the land well and I know the runs of foxes use and that saves me a lot of effort. The farmer, Pete, he, he gives instructions here and he wanted a box made to conceal me and him on occasions for as little money in the shortest possible time. And that's what we ended up with, but it does the job. It conceals me, it keeps the rain off uh, when the bit of black plastic's held down by the stones on the roof. Normally it's placed against a hedge or in a corner of a field so the side views are not necessary. The front gives you a, a very wide field of view. Um, that's for looking through checking if there's anything coming from the side but normally it's placed in a position where I know pretty well the foxes will be coming from. In this sort of area foxes aren't too wary of items in the field, they're not worried about cars, they're not worried about boxes, they see an awful lot of various implements running around the farm being left and they take very little notice of it. It's put out and I would leave it for probably two or three days before I attempted to get into it. Oh, two, two hours, two and a half hours is long enough. It costs next to nothing and I've shot quite a few from it. Thank you, Mike. Now, from the British fox to the wider world of wildlife, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. The Czech girl who likes beating aunties, whom we shouted out last week in news. Check out, check, see what I did there. Bitly slash Czech girl now has a hunting channel on YouTube. Worth a sub just to see what she does next. Manu Goykalea gets in touch from Spain. He is making hunting shows for TV stations in Canada and South Africa. So far, he has not realised the wonder of YouTube, and there is just this one promotional film, but he will, so subscribe to him now. There's a really good run towards the end of Ferreting with Ryan and Molly part one, but I prefer part two for general dog work. Plus, it's not raining so hard. Out of Fly and Molly, Molly wins on style, but Fly on points. What do you reckon? Here's a dead cert hit for our pal Jörg Sprava. Chainsaw powered machine gun build days has him turning a gas operated chainsaw into a full auto launcher with hilarious consequences. Christopher Clausen has launched Clausen TV, an off YouTube online hunting channel, 49 US dollars a year, and here is the promo. He promises high quality hunting films from around the world. 
I have been showing the various teasers for the Zeiss Victory Experience British Columbia movie for the last month, hoping it is going to be good. And here it is. It is good. Here is state-funded fox shooting, well in this case coyote shooting from the USA. New Hampshire hunting guide Glenn Horn goes on a night hunt and gets showcased on NH Fish and Game. Down Under, where Fox Whisperer has assembled photos and footage of the SSAA Dubbo Fox Shoot 2015 and he couldn't resist stopping off for a hunt for real foxes on the way up. That's it for this week. If you have a YouTube film you'd like us to pop into the weekly top 8, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, if you don't like those, how about this? Schools Challenge TV is telling you how to buy your first gun. What's the difference between a trap gun and a sporter? Does stock length really matter? What's cast and should you worry about it? And who says you have to have 32 inch barrels? The experts at the Oxford Gun Company don't. Click on the link on the screen for more. Well, we are back next week. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Please go to our web page, please. Click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter or pop your email address into the constant contact box and we'll constantly contact you about our show Field Sports Britain. It's out at 7pm UK time every Wednesday. This has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing and goodbye.